Hey, Alex. Hey. Have you started thinking about the end of course exams? I, I think they're going to be a lot more difficult compared to the 8th grade tax. Yeah, I heard that too, but I passed last year, so I'm not worried. Did you get commended? No, I barely passed, but if I pass this year, I can pass again, right? I don't know. I heard it was much more challenging. Well, now I feel lost. I wish there was someone who could tell us about this. <laughs> What's that? It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Stargirl. Oh. Um, isn't that our English teacher, Miss Daniels? No, be quiet. It's Stargirl. Miss Daniels, I mean, Stargirl. What are you doing here? I have come from the farthest reaches of the universe, all the way from the LISD administration building, I mean, outer universe, to give you some tips and advice about the star exam you'll be taking for English 1. Star Girl presents Star Stats. You may be asking yourself, what is this star test I've heard so much about, and does it really matter? The answer is simple. STAR stands for the State of Texas Assessment of Academic Readiness. And yes, it does matter. Your English teachers have been preparing you for the STAR test in class, but it is important to see them with any specific questions you may have. In this presentation, we will give you more information about the test to help you be prepared. You may be wondering to yourself, what will the test be like? Fiction, nonfiction, poetry, drama, and media literacy are all the categories that are likely to be addressed. Your ability to comprehend and understand these genres will be assessed through multiple choice questions. Furthermore, your writing ability will be assessed through the short answer questions you've heard so much about in your English classes. And did I mention writing? You will be required to write up to two essays an expository or informational essay, and a literary or narrative type essay. Are you tired yet? Don't forget the importance of revising and editing. This section will assess your knowledge of grammatical structures, punctuation, spelling, and organization in others' writing. Whoa, that's a lot of work, but don't worry. We've been preparing you this whole time, and there are some things you can do. The four categories with which you should be most concerned are your reading comprehension, grammar and spelling, writing short answers, and writing compositions. Let's take a moment to discuss your reading comprehension. Read the following passage with me. The Woodman and the Serpent by Aesop. One wintry day, a woodman was tramping home from work when he saw something black lying on the ground. When he came closer, he saw it was a serpent to all appearances dead, but he took it up and put it to his bosom to warm while he hurried home. As soon as he got indoors, he put the serpent down on the hearth before the fire. The children watched it and saw it slowly come to life again. Then one of them stooped down to stroke it, but the serpent raised its head and put out its fangs and was about to strike the child to death. So the woodman seized his axe and with one stroke cut the serpent in two. Ah, he said, no gratitude from the wicked. Now we must see what we comprehend. Good readers think about these things while they are reading. We might wonder, who are the characters? What are the story settings? What point of view is being used and how can we tell? What conflict takes place in the story? What moment represents the climax of the plot? What is the story's resolution? It's important to think of these elements, or better yet, annotate and take great notes as you read. The more you are thinking and making connections while reading, the better prepared you will be when approaching the questions. Next is understanding the importance of grammar and spelling. A section called Revising and Editing will have you assess passages for correct spelling and mechanics. Will you be ready? Do you know your spelling and grammar rules? A study group with your teacher might be a good idea, as well as looking up common mistakes in writing online. Let's look. The life of an actor is not all glamour and not all excitement. On the contrary, actors who achieve any kind of success in their chosen profession often must put in long hours and suffer numerous hardships. Question 1 wants to see if a change should be made. What would you select? A, no change. B, not all glamour and excitement. C, all glamorous and not all excitement. D, 
not glamour and excitement. If you chose answer B, you are correct. It is not all glamour and excitement. We do not need to say the word not twice. Now let's look at number two. What should we do? A, no change. B, A-C-H-I-E-E-V-E. -E -E. C, A-C-H-E-I-V-E-S. D, A-C-H-I-E-V-E. -E. The correct answer is, you got it, D. This follows the rule I before E. Spelling rules are important to know and follow. Have you heard? There have been some changes to the STAR exam for English 1. Instead of three short answer questions, there will only be two but they will be a little longer. And in order to pass the short answer questions now, you have to give an answer and textual evidence. But you also have to explain how the answer and textual evidence connect. If you don't explain clearly, you will not pass the short answer questions. One of the most important things you're going to do on the STAR exam is to write the short answers. But your answer will not be good enough if it needs more explanation or specificity, or if it represents only a literal reading of the text. You must go above and beyond in order to pass the short answers. In order to score a passing grade of 2 or 3, you must use textual evidence that is relevant and specific, and you must make a strong connection to your answer in your explanation. You will have 10 lines instead of the previous 5 or 8. This extra room is for you to make a strong explanation. If you do not explain and connect, you will not pass. Let's look at some examples. This question asks, in this excerpt from Anne of Green Gables, do you think the stage directions enhance your understanding of the scene? Explain your answer and support it with evidence from the selection. They're asking us about stage directions. That reveals to us that this is a piece of drama. Having read it previously on the STAR exam, you may realize that it's a piece of drama, and then you would answer accordingly. Yes, it does enhance my understanding because it describes Anne to me. It lets me know that she is waiting for something. The child wears a too large overcoat. Wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. This student says it enhances the understanding because it describes Anne, and they make sure that they describe Anne with their textual evidence that says the child wears a too large overcoat, but their explanation says it lets me know she is waiting for something. In no way does wearing an overcoat suggest that she may be waiting for something. Unfortunately, this short answer fails. The stage directions help a lot because you can create better pictures in your head about what is going on. When the directions say Anne clutches her bag, she is terrified, it shows that Anne is scared without Anne having to say it. This short answer is much stronger. Obviously, the answer, yes, the stage directions help to create pictures in your head, and the explanation showing Anne is scared without Anne having to say it, and the textual evidence Anne clutches her bag showing she is terrified, all connect and all create a passing score. But what do I do if I want to go above and beyond? Students who make score point threes do go above and beyond. The stage directions most definitely help get an image of the scene in the play. In a short story or novel, authors use words to describe the setting that the characters are in, which helps paint a visual image in the reader's mind. Descriptions like a small figure, a child, sits on a battered suitcase, and directions as to who a character is turned talking to, like to Anne, help the reader see what is happening, just like descriptions in a novel or short story. The reader can definitely see the play being acted out in their minds, which helps them understand the scenes better and connect with the characters just by reading. Why does this get a three? It has more explanation. It shows a connection between the simple stage directions and what is happening in a reader's mind as they are reading. This very strong connection earns this student a score point of three. The final step in the STAR process is writing your compositions. 
Remember, you must get a score of 3 or 4 to pass. A score of 1 or 2 will not be adequate enough to pass. Let's look at the rubric for a score point 3. Your story represents a satisfactory writing performance. Your organization and progression show correct structure of your story. Most details contribute to the effectiveness of your story. And the writer's presentation of the story is adequately controlled. You have a clear introduction, body, and conclusion. Next, we have development of ideas. Specific details add some substance to the story. For the most part, these details contribute to key literary elements, such as character development, conflict, and point of view. The story also reflects some thoughtfulness. Your personal reflection and insight is very important here. Finally, we have use of language and conventions. Your word choice is specific and concrete. Your sentences are varied and adequately controlled. And your writing demonstrates command of sentence boundaries, spelling, capitalization, punctuation, grammar, and usage conventions. That means you use appropriate diction, you carefully revise, and finalize your essay. Some other helpful tips when it's time for STAR. It's important to get rest the night before, eat a healthy filling breakfast, and wear something comfortable. Don't forget to bring a novel in case you finish early. Wow, that was a lot of great information. Yeah, I feel a lot more prepared now than I was earlier. I guess it'll be harder than it was last year. I've actually paying attention to class. Ms. Daniels, I'm in Starville. Thanks for telling us what we need to know. Absolutely, you're welcome. Keep working hard, and I'll see you among the stars. <laughs>